Okay, guys, so uh, we have script training. Today is Wednesday, the 28th. We're going to be going over the buyer presentation today. Um, and I wanted to make this more interactive today. Um, I know we have people at different skill levels, some people that have done the buyer presentation on their own, some people that had have, uh, haven't done it yet at all. Um, so maybe let's just get a quick survey. Um, if you've done a buyer presentation on your own, um, I guess raise your hand. Who on here has done the buyer presentation on their own? Diana. Alessandra, have you? Yes, no? Uh, yes, a couple. <laughs> Okay. What about you, Mai? Have you done any buyer presentations on your own yet? I've ran one by myself, but um, Blanco was still on the call, so she was still pitching in. Okay. Um, and I think that's probably it. I think the rest of you guys have maybe been on a call, been on some of the calls, but maybe not have done them on your own. Um, so we kind of have different levels, right? Some people who are just starting, some people who have done a couple. So I want to kind of just go over, we'll take a look at the buyer presentation together just to kind of point out some key parts of it. So everyone is familiar with the buyer presentation and what it looks like. And then I want to go through some pointers and then we'll do a little bit of role play. Um, so let's pull it up. Let me share my screen. So step one, guys, is just knowing where to find the buyer presentation at. Uh, for some reason, this image isn't loading on my computer. I got to fix it. But when you guys pull it up, it will load. It'll, it'll basically look like this home buyers consultation. It'll be an image of this on this page on our website. So to get to our buyer presentation, um, you would go to our website. Uh, realestateprg.com forward slash VIP buyer. So when you plug that URL in, it takes you to this page and it'll usually ask you for a password because it is password protected. Um, so this is a quick way to get to it if you don't have it already saved. Once you click on this image right here, it'll pull up the PDF version of it. So some of you guys may have the PDF version already saved. So this is a good thing you would want to save on your computer. Um, if you don't have it saved, you can access it by just going to that page on our site. And the password is buyer. So when you pull it up, if it asks you on the first time to put the password, the password's buyer. And that takes you here. And it's basically a hidden page on our site um, where you can easily access the buyer presentation. And then something else you'll be able to see here is the loyalty agreement so this one that's highlighted in the teal color if you click on that one it'll pop up the pdf of just the part of the loyalty agreement for the buyer presentation this way if you're having to download that and send it out to get signed with your client uh, you have it easily available so what I'll do is when I set up my buyer presentation, I'm gonna have this page already open. So let's say we're gonna do a Zoom consultation. I'll have this page already open. I'll have this screen up. I'll already click on this so that it pops up here. It's already opened up as a window here. Some of the other things I'll have ready to go is gonna be our Zillow profile where clients can see our page, how many sales we have, how many five-star reviews we have. And I'll use this during the presentation to kind of uh, showcase, you know, our, uh, our, our uh, track record. And then I'll also have like top agent network pulled up, which is a place where we can find off-market properties. So this is also something that we can share with buyers, just showing them the extra resources that we have. And then you may want to pull up any other thing that you're going to use in your buyer presentation. Let's say it's like um, maybe some information about you. Maybe um, if you have a bunch of reviews, some of you guys are still in the process of building your reviews, but you may want to pull up your own page. Like Diana may want to open up her own window um, for her Zillow. 
which has some more information about her specifically. And, and you can also show the teams as well. So are there any questions on how to get to the buyer presentation? Let's start there. Any questions on how to find this or access this or locate the buyer presentation itself? Cool. Um, so let's start going through the buyer presentation and I'm gonna go through this um, briefly. I'll kind of touch on the main points, but what I encourage all of you guys to do is go on your computer, pull up the buyer presentation and read through this thing inside and out. Read it, understand it, um, know what all the different pages are all about. It's not that long, it's only nine pages. But you don't ever want to meet with the client and try to do the buyer consultation if you haven't read through it first, right? Like, and you're reading it like kind of as you go, you don't want to do that. You want to internalize this thing, you want to memorize it, you want to go through it a bunch of times, you want to make, you know, know this like the back of your hand. This way, when you are talking to your client and presenting on a buyer consultation, it comes off smooth, well rehearsed, and you're able to speak confidently and you're not having to necessarily think about the information. You're able to more just focus on the needs of the client. A question here in the chat. You may have to write it down. Yeah. So for some of you guys that are, you know, everyone learns differently. So some of you guys may be good at just reading this thing. Some of you guys may want to write it down, you know, because writing uses a different part of your brain. Um, and it helps you internalize things a lot more. So if you're that type of person where, you know, like you're, you don't remember things, you know, that good, write this thing down. And as you write it and as you read it, read it back, it's going to, you're going to internalize it even more. And uh, Diana brought up a good point, make it yours. Uh, so yeah, that's a good point is the buyer presentation, the whole purpose of it, it's a guideline, right? Um, you want to make it yours. You want to say it in your own voice. You want to say it in your own words, so to say, but you want to follow the format, right? There's a reason why we laid this format out. There's a reason why we did it in this order as well, because it kind of flows and it hits on the different points that you want to touch base on, but you can feel free to elaborate on certain points. If you think they're going to be more valuable to your client. Right. Like if you know your client because you've talked to them and because, you know, you've already met with them, maybe, or you showed them some homes or you had a good, you know, a good talk on the phone. If you know there are certain things that are important to them, then you're going to want to maybe emphasize those things and stay on those things and elaborate even more. Like if your client is is really concerned with. You know, making sure the agent is experienced, then you may want to really go into our experience and stay on that point and show them you know, the Zillow profile and like go down the line and really, you know, expand and show them all the different properties. And I'll, I'll kind of show you how I do that in a second. Um, but you got to remember that every single person that you deal with, they're looking for different things. There's different things that are going to be important to them. Um, maybe certain things that you might think are important, but are not important to the client, right? So that's why it also is important to ask your client, hey, what's important to you? What are you looking for when you work with an agent? What's important to you in this buying process? And we'll go, we'll go a little more in depth in that in the strategy, right? Now let's go through the buyer presentation and what it's all about. So page number one is going to be the home buyer consultation, just the cover page. Um, we try to make it super clean, just modern looking, nothing too crazy. Um, about us. So these are all the bullet points, right? 15 years of experience, over 500 transactions closed for our team, over 500 five-star reviews between our Zillow and our Google. Um, we're Zillow Premier a agents, we're Redfin partners. We may even want to, uh, want to add in like Zillow Flex. That's something we're, now that I'm looking at this, things that we can maybe add or enhance, but you can maybe touch base on that while you're explaining to, hey, Zillow Premier agent, we're actually the Zillow Flex partner. What that means is Zillow Flex picked us you know, out of all the teams out here in the Bay Area. Um, top agent network, right? It's going to explain that. We have experience in the mortgage side. We have a whole mortgage division that you can, you know, talk about 
And then we also have experience in like developing properties and, you know, rehabbing and remodeling. We have contractors and stuff like that. And then we're members of the National Association of Realtors, California Association, and the Santa Clara County Association of Realtors. And you can tell them why that's important, right? We're part of this, this group. There's ethics and classes we have to take and all these different things to, you know, keep us in good standing. Are there any questions about the about us, what the about us is all about? And feel free to add questions, guys, in the chat right now. So if, as I'm going through this and going through each page, if there's any questions about a specific point that I'm going over, just drop it in there um, so that we can go over that. I think a big point. The PRG I, value. Enrique, really quick. I think a big, point, a big point in the beginning is, you know, we've laid out the, the bullet points, but being able just to speak on it, not just read it, right? And, and being able to kind of elaborate on each one of them and focus on the ones that you're really comfortable with, right? And focus on the ones where, where the client may see the most value, right? So, so again, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I think it's important to understand these are just bullet points, but you got to rehearse it, guys. We're not going to read line for line when you're presenting this. Yep. Diana, what do you got? Um, I was just going to say this is also the time to understand like their worries, their fears, their belief system when you're talking like about us to kind of hear what they're worried about so that you address it up front. I didn't get to today on my buyer's console, but maybe this is even when I bring up the Redfin, I'll be like, yeah, you know, talk about how some agents give their commission back, but be careful because those are the agents that might leave money on the table. Like those kind of things that are uncomfortable. I like to talk about them up front so you don't have um, issues later. Yeah, and that's definitely part of being a good presenter, right? It's, it's making sure you address concerns before the client brings them up to you, right? And that's where asking the client what their concerns are, what their worries are, what their pain points are. Hey, what are you most nervous about, you know, going forward when buying a home? What do you look for in an agent that you work with? You know, how do you, you know, what are some of the things that are important to you as you go through this process? So when you're asking the client these things up front, they're basically going to give you the keys, right? They're going to tell you what they want to hear. So then you should be writing those things down or taking mental notes. And then as you're going through the presentation, you're going to touch on those things and you're basically answering all the client's concerns. So by the time you get to the end of this presentation, like you've already hit all the bullet points that are important to the client and you've wowed them. So if you guys learn this thing really good and you learn how to deliver it really well, nine times out of 10, your client is just ready to go at the end. They're not like, because you've answered everything. The best presentation is at the end when you say, hey, okay, are there any other questions before we move forward? And the client says, no, you've actually answered everything that I was thinking of. That means you did a good job and you hit all the points that were a concern to them, right? So uh, back to this. So PRG value, right? Although this is, this is only like, you know, four bullet points, this is your, your time to really drive these things home, to really talk about what separates us from the other agents, right? So the PRG value, extensive market knowledge, Right. So what I would, if I were an agent, I would say, you know, we have extensive market knowledge. Every single week, we have a team meeting where we're meeting, where we're talking about the market, where we're networking with the other top agents in our office. We're finding out what areas are hot. You know, you're going into detail about all the things you do throughout the week that make you more knowledgeable than the average agent. Uh, our reputation and network, right? This is where you can talk about the reviews and stuff like that and why it's important to work with an agent who has a network and who has a reputation because all those things are going to play a role in a competitive market. Um, I usually like to say, hey, 90% of the time, I know the other agent, or I have some sort of relationship or some sort of connection to the other agent who's listing the property because of our network, because we've been doing this for so long, because we have sold so many houses, we've been in so many battles, we are known throughout the Bay Area as one of the top teams in the Bay Area, right? So nine times out of 10, the other agent, when they get an offer from us, they go, oh, okay, PRG. I know who PRG is. And that gets our foot in the door. And that gives us access to more information than some other agent who doesn't have this type of reputation and network. Um, you're going to talk about our team model, 
and the client experience that we're looking to give, right? And I would showcase, you know, all the five-star reviews and I would tell them why it's important to have a team that works for you and not just rely on one agent, right? Because the market moves fast. Like there may be a time when you need to show a house and I'm not available, but I have someone on my team who can be available or my assistant can go open the door or my transaction coordinator is helping with documents and stuff like that. And that gets the file moving faster and you have a better client experience. So you'll be able to elaborate on all those things. Um, our preferred vendors and resources, right? You could talk about our relationships with the mortgage team in our office. You could talk about all the different vendors we have from inspectors to stagers to contractors to uh, legal advice, right? The title company that we've been working with for you know, 15 plus years, all these different things, right? We have CPAs, we have accountants, we have all these different people who can help you um, so that you're protected throughout the transaction, right? And you're also getting preferred service, uh, expedited service. Uh, sometimes you're getting preferred rates and stuff like that. So when you go into this, even though it's, even though this is only a few bullet points, I would definitely spend time on this and stretch this thing out and elaborate on this part right here. Because the thing is, you don't want to do it the other way where, man, I should have said this or I should have said that. It's better to say a little bit more. And the client's like, man, like, like the other guy I talked to at the open house just said, hey, let's go look at houses. Like he didn't talk about any of this. He didn't tell me like how all these things were going to help me get a better deal or help me get have a smoother transaction or, or help me find the home faster or anything like that. So this is your time to sh really shine and emphasize why you want to work with not only me as an agent, but my whole entire team um, and how that's going to help you succeed. Any questions, guys, before I move on? Okay, great. Uh, uh, your goals and experience, right? This is our time to now start asking the clients some questions. Hey, you know, tell me a little bit about your goals and your experience. Let's recap. You may have even talked about this right when you started the consultation. Hey, just recapping. But it's good, even if you've already talked about this, it's good just to re-say it and reiterate it. Hey, I want to just recap. You know, this is your first time buying a home, right? And this would be your chance to ask like, hey, what's important to you? Are there any concerns? Are there any things you want me to cover? Uh, as we go through this presentation. Or if they're an experienced buyer, this is another thing where you may have to adjust your presentation because you may have a buyer that's purchased several homes and a lot of this stuff may not wow them, right? They may just want you to get to the point. They may want to only know about certain pieces of the presentation. So it's important to understand what type of buyer you're, you're dealing with. A first-time buyer is going to want a lot more information, a lot more hand-holding, um, right? They're going to want you to be a lot more detailed. Uh, an experienced buyer may say, oh, okay, yeah, I already know all that part. I just want to know these two things. So this is your chance to ask those questions. Your timeline for purchase, right? So I want to understand from the buyer, like how soon do you want to be in, in your home? There's a difference between when you start the process and when you're actually in the home and getting your keys right because you can start looking at homes today you can go out and look at homes you can make offers you can finally get your offer accepted and it's going to take 30 to maybe 45 days depending on the timeline to get the keys in your hand so you want to be able to know what's the ideal date when you want me to hand you over the keys to your new property then we can backtrack from there right we can say okay if you want your keys by christmas that means we need to be in contract by Thanksgiving. That means we need to start looking at homes, you know, between this time and this time, because it might take some time to find you the right property, right? So you want to factor all that into the equation. Uh, next part is the market review, right? So this is the time when you're going to go over the market with them and you're going to maybe ask the question, hey, what do you know about the market? It's, it's a good practice to ask the client what their perception of the market is because you get to understand how they see it, what they've heard, what their uh, maybe misconceptions they might have. Maybe they say, hey, um, yeah, I know it's a bad time to buy right now. And you may, okay, well, ma what makes you think that, right? But if you don't know how your client is thinking because you didn't ask these questions, um, then you're not going to be able to tailor 
your presentation, right? So you want to ask your client, hey, what do you know about the market? What have you heard about the market? And stuff like that. And then I would say, okay, this is what you've heard. Now let's go over the facts. This is what's actually happening. Um, this is what the inventory is like. Is it a buyer's market? Is it a seller's market? Um, this, and then you could even go into specifics of the area that they're looking into. Okay, I know you're looking into this part of San Jose, this particular neighborhood. But maybe let's pull up you know, the MLS and let's see actually what's going on in that neighborhood. Or maybe you've already had that information ready to go. Um, this way, all you got to do is click on the little tab and boom, you have the MLS and you have some data on that neighborhood that they're looking into, right? And that shows like how prepared you are and that you've actually put some time and effort to prepare for this presentation. Um, you'll talk about market trends and the competition, what it's like. You'll talk about the interest rates and financing options and just, you know, touch on what you know, right? But the whole thing is you're trying to give the, the client an idea of what the market is like what they're getting themselves into as we move forward. You're setting expectations on, you know, is it going to take us, you know, one weekend of showings? Is it going to take us 12 weekends of showings because there's no inventory where you're looking? Are we going to have to pay over asking? Is there room for negotiation? You know, what's it looking like right now for me as a buyer in today's market? Okay, I'm going to stop right there. Let's take some questions. What Questions do we have so far about any of this, if any? Real quick, Enrique, I want to add something. Um, again, guys, I, I deal with other agents outside of PRG, and a lot of them wing it. They don't have a detailed buyer presentation. So again, I don't. I want us to realize how valuable this is. You know, even if you're seasoned in real estate or if you're brand new, this shows so much value compared to other agents outside of, of our network. So I highly recommend, you know, knowing this like the back of your hand and realizing that this, this is key to getting buyers to work with you. Even if they, even if you had a buyer say, Hey, listen, I'm already working with another agent or, you know, my cousin's an agent. That's totally fine. Let me at least give you my buyer presentation. Let me show you the value. Let me show you the way PRG handles their buyers. Right. So again, guys, this is I want you to understand this is gold here. This is something a lot of teams, a lot of agents, unfortunately, don't have. And this is the way to show tremendous, tremendous value for your guys as buyers. Yeah, I, I would honestly, I would probably guess that probably 50 percent of the agents out there, your competition don't have a buyer presentation. At least half. So if a client, if a client is interviewing four agents probably out of those four maybe only two of them have a formal buyer presentation it's because they don't teach you this stuff in in real estate school uh, a lot of the big brokerages they don't just provide a buyer presentation like you got to go build your own thing and most people don't know what to build um so it's not like it's not like you just become a realtor and then boom like your buyer presentation appears out of nowhere and you have this nice buyer presentation this is something you have to actually build and rehearse and know. And we've gotten this, you know, we've learned this from coaching with other top teams and top team leaders. And we, you know, basically took all the different ideas and made our own. That's unique to, to our team and our market. Um, so the stats are in your favor, right? The stats are in your favor. If you know they're talking to another agent, there's a good chance, a 50% chance that that other agent doesn't even have a buyer presentation, didn't even do anything like this. They maybe just did like an informal like phone call or informal little chat. Um, so just the fact that you're able to show this, it already just makes you look even that much more professional. And then if you actually do, if you are competing with another agent, or if they are interviewing another agent who has uh, a buyer presentation, there's a good chance that the agent isn't rehearsing this thing all the time, right? Like they're not constantly doing script training and stuff like that to really get this down. So the advantage that you have is that you'll know it better. You've rehearsed it more. You're able to put your own personality. You're, you're on these trainings every single week to become a better salesperson, right? So when you put those things together, guys, if you can master this right here, like this will take your business to a whole nother level. Right, because now you can just meet with people on the fly and boom, you can wow them instantly. 
And one okay. last thing I want to add. Go guys, ahead. One last thing is even though you're helping your family member or an SOI, that doesn't mean you skip this step. Okay. Don't assume that they're going to work with you. Don't assume any of that. Always continue to show value by going through this process of doing a full buyer consultation. And I know we're skipping this sometimes, guys, when you go out to show a Zillow Flex at a property, we show the property immediately. But again, always bring them back, right? And show them this buyer presentation and then continue to show property. Okay. This is this is a this is a game changer here, guys. This is gonna, this is definitely gonna elevate your business if you can master this. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's a that's a great point, guys, is that even if it's your friend or family member don't assume they're going to work with you because you're their friend or you're their family member. That's not the way it works. Clients are going to work with who they think is going to be the best fit for them and who they think is going to get them to their goal in the best way. Um, quickest, fastest, and the best result. Lauren, you raised your hand. Yeah. Um, for the resources for kind of like inventory and things, do you usually use Aculist or um yeah honestly i use um it's really up to you some agents i know use aculus some use agents use uh just go on the mls and just pull up like a quick little search and for that specific you know area um it's really up to you whatever you're familiar with so i would say pick the one pick the one that you like pick the one that you're familiar with that you can explain at a high level Uh, okay, next part, home buying roadmap, right? right? So this is where we're going to go over the home buying process. And this is also important for you guys that are newer to read through this and understand the home buying process, right? right? Because how can you help someone buy a home and go through the process, walk them through the process if you don't fully know the, the, the process as well, right? So it may sound like, an, like a no brainer, but you'd be surprised like, like when agents first start in the business, they don't automatically know everything that's going to happen in a transaction, right? So um, it's the same thing for a first-time home buyer. They don't know what to expect. They don't know what comes next. They don't know all those different things. So you want to make sure that you read this and you understand it and you ask questions, right? Um, and there's no question is a dumb question, right? The dumb question is the one that you didn't ask and you just don't, now you don't know, right? So if you're not sure like what inspections and all this stuff is all about, this is where you take the time to get some coaching. This is where you ask in these trainings. This is where maybe you pull us another agent to the side and say, hey, can you explain to me like how the inspections work, right? Stuff like that. Or you attend these trainings um, to educate yourself. But essentially what this is, the home buy-in roadmap, right? So we broke it down into three easy steps for the client. And we're just going to go through these steps. Now, this is the part where you can speak a little bit more and elaborate if they're newer. If they purchased a home or sold some homes before, you may just want to maybe hit the bullet points, right? So if it's a first time buyer, I'm going to go through all of these things. I'm going to read pretty much read line for line, you know, in my own words, right? So finding your new home from the initial consultation in our initial consultation, which is this, this is what we're trying to examine, right? Objectives, priorities, timeframes, local market, dis discuss lending, define how we will work together. We'll go through financing, right? What are the different steps for getting financing? And you'll go through each of those. Then the fun part, which is the home shopping. This is what we're going to do to go through the home shopping. Then we're going to make an offer, right? So at some point we find the home, we're going to make an offer. We're going to jump on another uh, consultation like this, or maybe we'll meet in person. And this is all the things we're going to go through to determine what's the best offer. Once our offer gets accepted, now we're in escrow. So these are the different things that have to happen while we're in escrow. Escrow setup, go through the details, submit your info to the lender, go through the details, inspections, property conditions, go through the details, review inspections, all that good stuff. We may even do this up front, you know, depending if we're waiving our contingencies, but you're basically going through the whole uh, escrow process. And then the closing part of it, right? So we'll sign off on the loan, get your loan funded. What does that mean? We're going to go through all these steps here. We'll do our final walkthrough right before we close. And then if everything's good, we record and we close the deal. And then this is when I hand you the keys. 
right? So I'm going to take some time explaining this to the client. And then I'm going to say, hey, what questions do you have about this process, right? Or maybe I'll go through the first column and I'll say, hey, are there any questions that stand out? Anything that you want me to explain in further detail? No. Okay, great. Let's go to step two in escrow, right? So also what's important, guys, is taking the time to ask questions and make sure your, buy, your client is engaged. Um, and one of the tactics that we use, right, is asking for questions, right, or just pausing. It's the same way I'm doing right now. Like I'm doing a lot of talking and I'm saying, all right, guys, we went to this page. Let me go ahead and stop. All right, who has some questions or some comments that they would like to add? And that's for me to make sure that you guys are paying attention to this training that I'm doing, right? It's the same thing with when you have a client on a Zoom consultation. Sometimes they may have distractions. Sometimes they may be on their phone. Sometimes they have their kid, right? Tugging at them or making noises or whatever it might be. So you want to make sure that you are in tune with the client and consistently asking questions so that you keep that rapport, uh, you stay in rapport, right? All right. What questions do you guys have so far before I move on to the next section? Those of you guys that have done this already, that are doing this and have had success, are there any other things you, you are adding at this point? Okay, great. I like to end with excitement. I always find these consultations, it's a lot of information. It could be somewhat boring. It could be a lot of numbers. Uh, at the end of the consultation, I like to end with excitement about with motivation, with the home search, with mindset of how we're going to help you win, more strategies than consultation stuff. Yeah, that's great advice. And that's a great point, right? Because it is a lot of information, right? Even for a first time home buyer, it could be overwhelming uh, to hear all this information if you don't know what it's all about, right? If it's the first time hearing it, it's a lot of information and they may not grasp all of this information in that first consultation, right? Like, like the, you're giving it to them, right? You're basically throwing up all these verbs and term, you know, these words and terms on them in terms on them, but they may have the same question later on. So I think it's important to like, like Thomas said, and with excitement, reassure them like, Hey guys, I know this may be a lot of information, but don't worry. We're going to be going through this stuff throughout the process. And you're going to hear me repeat a lot of these things so that it makes sense to you. And like he said, talking about the mindset, like I'm here to help you win. I'm here to help formulate the best strategies for you. So that, you know, you can find the home of your dreams and, and get it as you know quickly as possible and get the best deal possible. Right. So I like that, that you pointed that out, but just be aware of that. Right. Like it is a lot of info. So you got to make sure you're keeping them in tune. OK, the next thing here, guys, is we're going to talk about contingencies. Right. So this is the time when we're going to say, hey, Mr. Client, you know, we mentioned contingencies in the timeline. But let, let me go into a little bit of more detail because contingencies are important when you're buying a home. Um, and I'll usually say, hey, do you know how contingencies work? So it's always good to start each page with a question, right? Because it gets your client to engage and it gets your client to also tell you what they know or what they don't know. This way, you know where to elaborate or to pull back on certain things. So I would say, hey, uh, Jason, let's role play real quick. Let's do it. Okay, hey Jason. So uh, the next thing we're going to talk about are contingencies. I mentioned them in our in our timeline in the home buying process. Do you know how contingencies work and why they're important when buying a home? Uh, I I've heard about them, but I, I yeah I'm not familiar with with actual contingencies. Okay, perfect. So I'll go ahead and, and touch on some of the details and feel free to ask any questions while we're going through this. So contingencies are basically safeguards that we put in the contract to protect you and protect your deposit and stuff like that so that you can make sure you check off, you know, the different boxes and do the different research you want to do before moving forward and before putting your deposit on the line. That's basically what contingencies are. 
And there's three main contingencies in the contract. There's gonna be your inspection contingency, there's gonna be your appraisal contingency, and there's gonna be your loan contingency. And I wanna kind of go through what each one means and you know how that's gonna work for us in the contract. Uh, so I'll start off with inspection contingency. Basically what the inspection contingency means is it's your chance to evaluate everything that, it, you know, all the condition of the property, all the disclosures, all the information that the seller provides us. Um, you're going to go through all those things. You're going to be able to walk through the property. Uh, you're going to be able to, you know, basically do all your due diligence and make sure this is the right home for you um, before we check that off. So we can put a certain timeline in the contract. Um, sometimes we may do that all up front. This way, when we make our offer, we don't put any contingency. Or if we need to, we can ask the, the seller to give us a certain amount of days to do all of our research and due diligence. So sometimes we may ask for five days. Sometimes we may ask for 10 days, depending on how much time we need. And if something were to come up during this time that we weren't in agreement with, we can go back and try to renegotiate and try to reach a solution on that point. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Do you have any questions about what an inspection contingency means? No, what I'm noticing, I mean, what I've been told is that you know, a lot of these offers are, be, been, are being written with no contingency. Is that, is that true? Yeah, that's a great, uh, great question. So it is, it does happen sometimes and it really depends on the market conditions. Um, writing an offer with no contingency can be a little risky because essentially what you're telling the seller is like, hey, I've done all my homework. I've checked out the property. I've reviewed everything you've given me and I'm okay with moving forward. And here's my offer and I'm not gonna come back on my word. So yeah, if you're comfortable with doing that, it does make your offer a lot stronger compared to someone that does have a contingency. But I would only advise you to do that if we did all our homework up front. So it's really going to depend on, you know, how many offers they have. Uh, I wouldn't do it just because I would do it only if, if it was going to enhance our offer and make us more competitive against the other offers. Okay. And you, you advise me at that point, correct? Absolutely. Excellent. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, great. Let's move on to appraisal contingency. And then this is now out of role play. Right. This is now when I would spend the time going over the appraisal contingency, the same exact way. Right. And I would say, hey, basically what the appraisal contingency means is if for some reason the house doesn't appraise for what we offered, we can go back and try to renegotiate on the price. Uh, if we waive the appraisal contingency, we're basically saying, hey, we're buying it at this price, regardless of what the appraisal comes in at. And then we would have to cover any difference if for some reason it didn't it didn't appraise at that value. Um, you know, so there's pros and cons to waiving this contingency. And I would kind of go into that basically. And then I would stop and say, hey, do you have any questions? And then I would go to a loan contingency and I would do the same exact thing. The loan contingency is basically means you've already had the lender check everything with your finances and there's, they've gave you a commitment that they can do your loan. Um, I would only waive this if the lender can tell us that you are approved and not just pre-approved because pre-approved means they haven't seen any of your documents. Approved means they've already reviewed your documents and they're good to go. They're going to give you a loan. At that point, you know, we can waive the loan contingency and that would make us a stronger offer. And then I'm going to go down through these, right? I'm going to talk about the deposit, what the deposit means. Um, I'm basically going to summarize, right? All the explanations are here. And I'm basically going to summarize that in my own words and make sure that the client understands it. Talk about down payment, talk about closing costs. And then what's important here, guys, is the timeline, right? Because all of this stuff, like it's a lot of information, but you also got to put it into perspective for the client and go through the timeline. Okay, hey, Mr. Client, I know we went through a lot, but let me break it down for you on what the timeline looks for all of this to happen, right? So let's say you got your offer got accepted today. That's basically day zero. Tomorrow would be day one. Within the first three days, your deposit is due. Let's say we had a seven day inspection contingency. Within those seven days, we need to make sure we reviewed everything. We checked the property out. If there's any uh, inspections you wanna do, we'd have to do them by that time and we'd have to remove our contingency at that point. Then loan appraisal contingency, let's say we had a 14 day. 
we would do it in that time. Your loan docs are typically ready and signed by day 25 or so. We do a final walkthrough around day 27. We get your loan funded on day 29 and we close escrow and I hand you over the keys on day 30. Now this is a typical timeline, assuming everything goes as planned, right? There are gonna be certain situations where maybe we need an extension or maybe we need a few more days on our contingency or maybe the lender needs a few more days on the close of escrow. And that's gonna be my job to manage that um, keep you informed and work together with all the parties in the, in the transaction to try to close on time because time is of the essence. But if we need some time, then we'd, we'd have to go back to the seller and request some more time and make sure they're on board with that. And then I would stop. Hey, do you guys have any questions on the escrow timeline? Okay. For you guys, are we doing on time? 12, 16. Any questions on the what I covered so far, the contingency part and these other terms, deposit, down payment, etc. Any questions on how to explain it or any questions on what it means? One thing that I think one thing I like to add is explaining to the client that we're giving them an overview right now. And then once we get into these stages, we'll go, we'll revisit it again. So don't, you know, Mr. You know, Enrique, please don't think you have to remember, you know, memorize all this, but understand, I just want to give you a good overview of what the process is and what to expect. And once we get into these stages, I'll go ahead and go deeper into it with you and explain each one in detail. Yeah. Yeah, definitely reassure them, right? Because like we said, it could be overwhelming. Um, so making sure you reassure them like, hey, you're you're not expected to memorize all this. This is an overview. We'll be going through this and touching base on this periodically throughout the process. Excellent. Okay. Uh, the loan process. So we put this part in here. If you don't have a lender on the call with you, then you would probably want to just go through this, go through the loan process with them, right? And you're basically, you're not the expert, right? You're just basically going over the process and how it works, but I wouldn't substitute this for them talking to an actual lender. It's just, we put it in there so they understand what the process is like and the main bullet points. If you have your lender on the line, then I would have the lender go over this part with them. But for those of you guys that are newer and, and don't know yet, this breaks down you know, the different uh, stages of the loan, right? From getting pre-qualified, getting your pre-approval to getting your underwriting where the lender is reviewing all your documents to getting your loan approval where they've reviewed your documents and they say, okay, we approve your loan based off of this stuff, working with the title company, funding your loan and getting the deal closed. And then why pre-qualify, right? Most people understand why they should get pre-qualified, but occasionally you're going to run into some clients that they're early on in the process and they haven't gotten pre-qualified yet. Maybe this is the first time they're talking to anybody about real estate. So you're going to tell them, hey, hey we need to get you pre-qualified. We need to get you to speak to our lender. This is why. Okay, so two more pages. Uh, any, any questions before I move on, guys, to the, the loyalty program part? Okay, so, so before I go into the loyalty program and explain it, I want you guys to understand why this is in here and why this makes us different, right? So. When a buyer is going to work with you, essentially, if there's no written agreement between you and the buyer, if there's no formal agreement where they're saying they're going to work with you, um, the buyer can use you to go open doors, show them homes, and then they can turn around and go write an offer with someone else, or they can talk to multiple agents. They can have multiple agents showing them houses. And basically, you can do all this work and go through all of these things, and the buyer owes you nothing, right? Like they're, they're not loyal to you. A lot of times buyers don't know that they should be loyal to people. 
Some buyers do know that they should be loyal, but they choose not to be loyal because they're just trying to see who can get them the best deal. And also, it also depends on the market conditions, right? When the market was really, really hot and it was super competitive, sometimes buyers were just working with different agents because that was they felt desperate and they felt that was the only way they can get their offer accepted. Like, hey, I'm going to have this guy work for me. I'm going to have this guy. And let's see who gets me into a property the quickest. So what we have developed and what we have learned from our coaches and high level teams um, is what's called a loyalty program. And essentially what the loyalty program is, it's a way to get a commitment from your client to move forward. It establishes that, hey, you and I are working together and it makes it more of a formal relationship. This is not a buyer broker agreement. There's a buyer broker agreement in your uh, car contracts, which is a legally binding agreement. So if a buyer signs that agreement with you, um, then legally they're obligated to work with you. Uh, and if not, you can pursue them for a commission or you can maybe sue them if they were to go work with someone else. But at the end of the day, guys, we are not in the business of suing clients. So even if you were to have a buyer broker agreement, which many agents do use them, um, it's very, very few that will actually go out and try to sue a client and say, hey, you signed this agreement. Now you owe me commission. You bought with somebody else. We're just not going to do it, guys. Like we don't have the time and energy. And it's like, it's not something we're going to do, right? So what we have found is by doing this VIP loyalty program, it's a marketing tactic to get the client to work with us and to make a commitment to us and to establish that relationship. The client can cancel at any time, which is also a marketing tactic, right? Because a lot of clients will say, hey, I don't want to, you know, what if I don't want to work with you? What if I'm not happy? What if I sign this agreement and then you're not doing your job? Or what if I change my mind? Right. So that's why it's also part of the marketing that we're doing to say, hey, you can cancel any time, which makes this risk free. Um, and it positions us as, hey, we're going to have this agreement. You can cancel at any time. But this gives you all these benefits, all this value. And if I'm not doing my job, you can fire me at any point and you don't owe me anything versus other agents who may have you sign a buyer broker agreement where it's a legally binding contract and you can't cancel at any time. They would have to release you from that contract. And if you do decide to go work with someone else, they can come after you for a commission. We're not going to do that to you. We don't believe in that, but we do believe in working together and establishing a relationship, right? So I want to set the stage for why we do this and why it's important. Now, I've seen this happen countless, countless times. So. I want to really reiterate this. Do not skip this step. Do not skip this step. Even if it's your family member, even if you think, oh, well, the clients, you know, they're responsive and they're working with me and they're active and we're looking at homes. This right here will save you time, energy, and headache because it really puts them to the test to see if they want to move forward. Right. And the ones that don't want to move forward or the ones that are just using you to open that door for them, um, they will come to light when you ask them to sign this. Right. So it's a filter as well. It also it also filters out who's committed to the process and who is not. Right. Now, some clients may want not, not want to sign this up front, right? Because they also may want to take a test drive, right? Like it's like. They're like, hey, I just met you off Zillow. You just showed me this one home. I'm not going to sign this, right? So you may have to go show them a few homes. And then when you do your actual consultation, you built enough value where you can now say, okay, let's go ahead and make this, uh, establish this agreement between the two of us. So before I explain the loyalty agreement or go through it, does anybody have any questions on why we do the loyalty agreement or any concerns with having the client sign a loyalty agreement? No, oh, okay. Okay. I got something real quick. I have an SOI that he didn't go to the Zoom meeting. He didn't show up to the Zoom meeting. And he wasn't being very responsive. But I saw him a couple of days ago. And he's like, bro, I'm still ready. 
I was going to wait till next year because of the prices. And I had a little talk with him and he's like, okay, I'm ready. Find me a house. And I told him, I said, we had this conversation. Like it's kind of not going to do us any good if I show you houses and find something I like and you haven't been pre-approved and all that. And I went to that whole thing with him, but he's still like, well, if you find me a house and we see it and I like it, I want to put in an offer. But that's, that's where he's at. He's like stuck right there. Yeah. yeah, and that's a good question, man. Thanks for bringing that up because that's going to be a common thing that happens, right? Especially when it's like friends or family or whatever. But it's important that you position yourself as the professional, right? And this is what I would say. Let's say you were the guy, Miles, and you're my friend and, and you just had that conversation with me. I would say, hey, Miles, um, hey, look, Miles, I, I totally understand where you're coming from. Uh, you know, you know, and that sounds like a good plan, right? Like just find your house and you put an offer, but there's so much more to it. You know, the last thing I would want to do, Miles, is not inform you correctly. The last thing I would want to do is skip out on service just because you're my friend or you're my boy. Like I want to treat you like my best client possible. And this is the way we do things. We do things at a high level. And this is why we have over 500 five-star reviews and why we have this reputation. I'm part of this awesome team. And they're like, they're really training me on how to be one of the best agents in the Bay Area. And um, we have a proven process, right? When we sit down with clients and go through these things step by step, it's going to make sure you're informed. It's going to make sure you know if it's a good time to buy or not. It's going to show you how to find the best deals, right? It's going to make sure you you save yourself money and protect your money because there's a lot of money on the line. This is a big deal. So uh, if you're ready to, to go into that process, I would love to meet with you and show you exactly what you need to know in today's market because the market is changing. Um, you know, I wouldn't want to just go out there and kind of wing it on you just because you're my boy. Like, yeah, let's just look at homes. Like, I wouldn't feel like I'm doing a good job for you if I did it that way. So uh, I have some time tomorrow, you know, between two and three, you want to meet up in person, I can come by the house, or maybe you want to just jump on a quick zoom and we'll go ahead and do the, you know, go through the information. That's what I would do. But I wouldn't move forward with going out and, and, and like showing a bunch of homes. Um, now that doesn't mean you can't like take them to one home, just kind of like you do with a Zillow flex, right? Like a Zillow flex, it's a stranger go meet them at a property and then you go through all the things and you, you let him know why we have to do a consultation. And then you go for the consultation from there because that got your foot in the door. Right. So you may have to be a two-stepper, but I wouldn't go past showing him one, one home and start like being his agent and working for him unless I went through all this information. Yeah. I, I think two, two big takeaways that Enrique talked about right now was when he, when he, answered the objection, and then he went back right into the LP mama of setting the appointment. I don't know if you guys caught that, but immediately he answered the objection of why or explained why we need to meet, and then he just went into setting the appointment. The other thing I liked what he did was he in, in, the, in the two step of you give them what they want, right? In Zillow Flex, we are eliminating all the hurdles and we give them what they want. They call to look at a property. We show them that property. Miles' client or friend wants to see a property, we show it to them, and then we become back in the driver's seat, and then we explain to them why we need to go ahead and do this buyer consultation. So it's in that scenario, you're giving them something, and then you're also showing them what we need to do with the next step. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe actually showing him a house to get him excited and with the whole process, and then that might be actually a good idea then, right? Yeah. yeah, And that's what I would say. Why don't we do this? I would say, hey, Miles, pretend you're the guy, right? I would say, hey, Miles, why don't we do this? Why don't we go meet at a property? Let's go take a look at something that's maybe in your price range or something that you'd like to see. And then when we meet, I can go ahead and go over a lot of information there. Um, but let's at least maybe start there. And then if it's something that you want to move forward with, then we'll move forward and we'll, we'll start putting some things in place. Same thing you do with the Zillow Flex. Hey, I'll meet you today at this property. And then when you go out there, your job is to convert them, right? You do the same thing with your client. Uh, okay. Uh, VIP loyalty program, right? So the first part basically says it reiterates your value, right? The different things you're going to get for working with us. And you can say, hey, 
Here at PRG, we do things different than any other agent. We actually have what's called a VIP loyalty program. And we're going to be your VIP buyer specialist. And because you're working with us, like we give you these different perks and different things that most agents don't do. So I want to reiterate, you know, what you're going to get when working with us. Boom. We're going to help you secure the best financing, right? And then you're going to talk about working with our in-house lender and we'll help shop the rate around, making sure they get the best deal and stuff like that. Um, We'll provide you with updates on on market and off market listings, right? So you're going to talk about, hey, there's what's on the market. And there's also this other inventory that's not on the market that we can get you access to, which can get you a better deal and stuff like that, less competition. Um, we can arrange private showings for anything you want to see, right? So once you and I are working together, if you're driving down the street and you see a for sale sign, I want you to immediately text me and I'm going to stop what I'm doing. And I'm going to do some research on that property to make sure you get into these properties first before anybody else. Um, we'll discuss the best strategy for making an offer, right? And we'll go into detail what that all means. Uh, we'll, pre we'll prepare and present an offer with the terms and contingencies that protect your interests. So just reiterating how we're here to protect them um, and how we're going to help prepare the best offer so that they can win. Uh, we're going to recommend qualified vendors and partners, right? So you basically get access to all our partners, all our vendors. So you're reiterating all the values that, that they're getting through our relationships. And then we're going to deliver five-star service and have a member of our team always available to answer any questions. So you'll, be, you'll have access to me. You'll have access to my admin team, my transaction coordinator. There's always going to be someone that's there to answer your questions and keep you informed. And my goal is to deliver that five-star service and have you give us a five-star review on Zillow. So this is right here where you're like hyping them up with all the benefits, right, uh, of working with us. And then you're going to go into bonuses, right? Hey, these are bonuses from working with us that most other agents don't even offer. Number one is going to be a one-year home warranty. So you explain what the home warranty is, how it's an insurance that protects them from you know, some unexpected uh, repairs and stuff like that. We're going to make sure that you get a home warranty. We're either going to have the seller pay for it. And if the seller doesn't pay for it, then we're going to pay for it from our commission uh, as a bonus for working with us. Number two is our cancellation guarantee. That basically means that you can cancel this agreement at any time. If for some reason I don't live up to my promise, I don't uh, deliver what I said I was going to do. I'm not giving you good service. Just let me know. And we can cancel this. You're not bound to anything and you can go choose to work with another agent. All I ask is that just give me at least 24 hours to remedy. If there's something that I can do to fix the situation, that's all I ask from you. If you just don't want to work with us anymore, then just let us know and we can cancel this agreement. Um, most other agents are going to tie you into an agreement that you can't cancel. Bonus number three, sell for free guarantee, which basically guarantees that if you're not happy with your home let's say you bought your home and a year from now you're just not happy with it it's the wrong home it's the worst neighborhood and you regret buying that home um we will put that home on the market for you and sell it and we won't charge you our listing commission right we won't charge you the full commission like like another agent would um conditions apply and basically what the conditions are is that we're going to help them buy another property so like let's say they they moved to a home and it turned out to be like the hood or the ghetto and they didn't know or like they had the worst neighbor and they just want to get out of there and they're just miserable. Hey, we'll help you get out of this home. We'll help you avoid paying all those fees up front. And then we'll help you get into another home within the first 12 months. Um, last but not least, commissions, right? So normally it's two and a half to three percent commission that we earn. You don't pay us any commission. The seller pays the commission and that's negotiated as part of the purchase agreement that the seller is the one that, that's going to pay us the commission. So those are the four bonuses. And then we talk about an admin fee uh, for eXp Realty, right? So the only cost that you have when working with us is going to be a 995 administrative fee. And that's only due at the end. That's part of your closing costs. It's paid at the close of escrow. You don't pay anything up front. That's for the internal processing of your transaction. You also have a transaction coordinator who's going to oversee all the documents. You're going to get a, a USB with all of your stuff at the end. And it's going to uh, basically have all your documents there in case you ever get audited, need to do your taxes, anything like that. And that's usually how I explain that part. And I just roll to the next thing. I make it not a big deal. Um, 
And then basically I just close off with like, hey, remember, you're never under any obligation to purchase a property. Our job is to make sure that you're informed, that you find the right home, that we go through all of this stuff with you. And when you're ready to move forward, we're going to move forward and basically implore the best strategy and stuff like that. So this is basically what our loyalty agreement program is all about. And then the next page is going to be our cancellation guarantee. This is just putting in writing that you can cancel at any time. Your agreement is risk-free with us. If for any reason you're not satisfied, give us 24 hours to remedy a situation. If we can't remedy a situation, you're free to cancel. You don't owe us anything, anything like that. And we even give this to you up front, just so you know that's a cancellation guarantee. All right, let's take a couple questions, guys. That's the whole entire Pyre presentation. Um, what questions do you have on this before we wrap up? Let me ask you this. For those of you guys that have been in a buyer presentation, either done it or been part of it, was there anything that stood out to you today? Like anything that you're like, oh, I got to do that, or I got to do it this way, or I got to add this, or I got to say it this way, or I got to have the right mindset. Is there anything that stood out to you today now that I've explained it in detail? Type it in the chat. What stood out to you? I think a big thing, guys, is now that you know where it's at, you know, Enrique kind of, you know, he he went over it with you guys. I think it's now you everyone has to role play it and start just kind of getting it so you know, like the back of your hand, but just this has to come out so natural, right? Again, Enrique hasn't done this buyer presentation for years, and he can still go and be natural on each one of those points because he knows it like the back of his hand. So I highly recommend that you guys practice it. And you can practice it on anyone. You can practice it on your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your cousin, your brother, your sister. You can role play it with yourself. Um, but again, there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to understand it because we've laid it out for you guys. So definitely take the time and don't skip any steps, guys. Know each one of them. Know each one of them and be able to elaborate on each step and just practice the heck out of it, guys. I, I think that's that's the next step is, you know, this is great that Enrique is holding this 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 uh, training. But if we don't take ownership and practice it, it's it's we're not going to be able to we're not going to be able to execute it at a high level. Yeah, absolutely. Those of you guys that are doing it right now, is there a part of the buyer presentation where you get stuck on or where you don't feel confident on? Some of you guys that are doing the buyer presentation already. Liliana just mentioned she's free if anyone wants to practice and do a mock presentation. Definitely utilize Liliana. Hit up Lily, send her a message, set up a time. Awesome. Do a role play presentation, guys. Thank you, Lily. Thank you, Lily. Okay, so here's the homework, guys. Those of you guys, especially my newer agents, Miles, Teddy, Lauren, uh, Josh, I'm not sure where he's at with this, Brenda, uh, Jake, Dewey, whoever else was on here. I don't know who's on the Team PRG one. But your guys' homework is by next week, we need you guys to be able to role play this. Like, I want you guys to rehearse this, practice it, Lauren. All of you guys, and by next week, um, I want to do a recording with each of you actually doing the presentation because this is the next step, guys. Like, you get a Zillow Flex lead or any lead, right? You can go show them a home, but you will not convert that client to a to a that lead to a client if you can't do this buyer presentation. So, for a lot of you guys, like showing the homes is not a big deal, right? You've gone out there and you've showed homes. The next step is you need to be able to deliver this buyer consultation confidently. Um, so you got to put yourself out there. You've got to practice it. Like we need to shorten the time frame from when you start with us to when you're up and running doing buyer presentations. It shouldn't take months and months and months. 
it should like this should be the first thing you get down like you should be able to like when you first start with us like get this thing down within the first two weeks right like and and it's going to come from us holding you guys accountable right because some people slip through the radar slip under the radar and just kind of avoid it but you're only avoiding you closing deals and helping clients and going off on your own right so um I want to, I'm going to write, I'm going to take a screenshot of everyone who's on here. I got a kick. I already took one. Cause I haven't seen my boy, Jake. I haven't seen, I didn't know he's still alive, bro. Jake, you even there? Yeah. I need to see some buyer presentations, guys. It's time. It's time to get it. You know, no more training. Well, it's time to get up and running, get on our own, start doing these buyer presentations, right? We got to do these. And those of you guys that are doing them already, take the time to practice this thing and get better, right? Like some of this may have been review, like Alessandra, my, some of you guys that are already doing them, there may, there may be one or two things that you learned from today that you got to now tweak and implement, right? To just make it even better, right? You guys maybe already be doing it like at an okay level, but how do we get you to like doing this like, a top agent, right? And it's those little tweaks. Maybe it's your confidence. Maybe it's taking the time to pause and ask questions, um, right? Those little things that you got to, the little nuances that make your presentation even better. Um, also, sometimes it's just the energy, right? Like being more animated, like really building that rapport, making sure the client is engaged, right? Taking the time to be more personable uh, also goes a long way, right? Like there can be two people that say the exact same thing, but one person says it different and one person connects with the client more and it's two different results, right? So that, that's another factor. So that's all I got for you guys. Um, let me know if you need anything, but I'm going to be reaching out to you guys to set up a time to role play this with you. And I want, I'm going to want you guys to do a mock presentation on either myself or Jason um, by next week. Cool. Thanks guys. Thanks geeks. All right, guys, have a great day. Let me know if you need anything.